Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Thomas J. Douglas. I'm the superintendent of Horsehead Central Schools. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. We want to welcome you to the 24-25 Candidate Forum for the Horsehead Central School District Board of Education. This year, eight residents are running for three three-year terms on the Board of Education. The budget vote and election will take place on Tuesday, May 21st from 7 a.m. in the morning to 9 p.m. at night at the High School South Gymnasium. To learn more who, about who can vote in the 2024-25 budget, please visit our website or see the newsletter that has been mailed home and it should be in your mailbox at this point. Just as a brief overview, in order to vote in a school district election, you must live in the district 30 days prior to the vote, be 18 years old on the day of the vote or earlier. You do not um, have to bring ID, although it's highly recommended. You have to fill out an affidavit if you are not a registered voter, but whether you are a registered voter or not, you still are entitled to vote in a school board election. In addition, uh, you just have to fill out the affidavit and at that point, you are able to vote as long as you are a renter, property owner of a residence, not a business in the district. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's forum will be moderated by Anthony Miller. To my left, student rep for the Board of Education, and Miss Mia Sophia, our junior class officer. We want to thank them for their dedicated time of coming out tonight. The process for this evening is that we will go through an opening statement once directions are given by the students, a one minute opening by each candidate in the order of their ballot, as well as they will go through a series of questions that will be asked by the student moderators, and then a closing. We estimate that this time will take about anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes, and we appreciate everyone coming out. This is being live streamed and recorded and will be posted as soon as possible to our website. So ladies and gentlemen, you're about to be introduced to the candidates and we wish you all the best for tonight. Thank you for participating. Mr. Miller. Thank you. Before we will begin, Mia will raise her hand when there are 10 seconds remaining of your time. And we will begin with opening statements. Ms. Monahan. This is, oh, it's working great. Good evening, I'm Julie Monahan. I want to start by thanking the student representatives for allowing us the opportunity to speak with all of you this evening. And I would like to thank the other seven candidates to my left for being here and sharing an interest in the well-being of the district as well. I grew up in Big Flats, graduated from Horseheads in 97, and in 2003, migrated back to this area from Virginia. My husband and I have lived in the district for 21 years. We run a business in the district. We have two children who currently attend the district. I have a marketing degree and an MBA, and I've spent the last 21 years working in business development, sales, and community engagement. I feel confident that my skills can be a great asset to the district. My platform is simple. I believe in 100% transparency, collaboration across all levels, and I want to build trust among all stakeholders. I am here because we have a, in this district, we have an honesty problem, we have a financial problem, and we have a community morale problem. I want to be part of the solution. Thank you. We will now go to Ms. Glanton. My name is Mary Joan Glanton. I'm running for a school board uh, director position uh, because of the recent kerfuffle with the school board budget. That's what motivated me. I've lived in Horseheads for just under 20 years. I am very interested in the quality education of the children in my neighborhood and the children in Horseheads. I think that with my unique background in finance, I can bring an element to the board that would likely help with some of the elements that we've struggled with recently namely the budget. I've re uh, retired as a CFO from Casa Trinity. Before that, I was a finance director. Before that, I was a staff accountant. I've prepared budgets. I've applied for grant monies. I'd, I've administered grant monies. I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. Ms. Ugenvarsky. Thank you. I have lived in the Horseheads District with our family for the past 44 years. 
I served on the board for 10 years and resigned to do a UPK program for the district. I feel it is time to get involved with the school board again. There are many decisions that will need to be made and I want to be a voice for the community staff and students. We need to be transparent. As a board member, you are one of nine. There must be respect for others. Questions must be asked and answers must be given. As a board member, you need to remember you are elected by the community and do what is best for the community staff and students. For the past year, I've watched how the board treats other board members and members of the community. It is very sad to watch what is happening to our district. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Feinberg. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Horseheads, for hosting this forum. Uh, thank you to the student leaders. It's quite a task and responsibility you guys have, so thank you very much for hosting us. Uh, my name is Matt Feinberg. I'm a resident of the village. I live right here on Center Street. Um, my wife and I moved here nine years ago, and we're very happy to be here. Um, I'm the father of three young children, and they're watching right now on the live stream. Hi, kids. I love you. Mandy, how are you? Here I am. Um, I had to say hello, I promised. Um, I've lived, like I said, nine years in the district. Uh, I am an Ithaca College graduate. I am the high school band director in a neighboring town at Waverly High School. Um, I saw an opening. There are three vacant seats or three seats that are available and I'd like to offer my perspective. I know that I can give a lot. I know that I, thank you. Um, and I look forward to the opportunity if elected. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jacobus? Yeah, my name is Jim Jacobus. I'm a retired teacher from the Horsehead Central School District. I taught for 32 years. I recently served 12 years on the school board. And I decided to run when I went to a budget meeting. And I frankly did not like what I saw. I didn't think that the community was given a, a sufficient amount of information for which they could make some suggestions to the board. And so when I left that meeting, I said it's time to get some signatures on the petition. The other thing is we've now complete, we're, we're in the process of completing all of our capital projects. And we've made things look nice, uh, expensive looking and so forth, but now it's time to get back to our real job, and that's education. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Dale? Good evening, my name is Christine Dale, and I'm running for re-election. I have lived in the district for 20 years, and I have three sons. I am currently the Quality Management Program Director for Corning Incorporated. I bring nine years of board experience, 29 years of corporate experience, and 10 years of community engagement through my work with United Way. My experience with the finance and audit committees has given me a deep understanding of the budget process and our internal financial systems. I have the second most tenure on the board and the most board leadership experience, two years as VP and three years as president, both of which are important to help position future and newer board members for success. I have a record of being fair and balanced. A lot has happened in our district in the nine years I've served on the board. We navigated through a pandemic, we developed a plan and have been executing on new curriculum, we have had major capital construction in all of our buildings and an overall tax rate decline. I have always done my best to listen, ask questions, and express my views without any hidden agendas. Board members need to balance the needs of all stakeholder groups, and if re-elected, I will continue to do that and work to ensure our district and community is able to thrive. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kane? of the district since graduating from college in 2000. I'm a New York State certified school leader in the Elmira City School District, a wife and a parent to three amazing boys who attend the high school and the middle school. My role as a school administrator allows me to directly see and understand the needs of a district, its day-to-day -day operations, the impact of our decisions through living and breathing children and, and educators who need the board's oversight to ensure we can finance critical programs. Their futures depend on our competency to prioritize the most significant return, our professional capital, our humans, and overall student success. We need to be assessing the health of our programs 
and financially forecasting for these critical elements, not just to sustain our school programs, but nurture them through multiple revenue sources. Thank you. Ms. Forcier Rodaba. Good evening. My name is Avery Forcier Rodaba, and I sit before you today with a deep sense of commitment to the future of our schools and the well being of every student in our community. As a parent, educator, and lifelong advocate for quality education, I am honored to be a candidate for the school board. I believe that our school should be a place where every child feels valued, empowered, and equipped to thrive in an ever-changing world. If elected, I will bring to the board a wealth of experience in teaching, learning, and educational leadership, along with a steadfast dedication to fostering collaboration, transparency, and accountability within our educational system. I am committed to ensuring that our schools provide not only academic excellence, but also support the social, emotional, and mental well-being of every student. I believe in championing equity and inclusivity so that every child, regardless of background or circumstance, has access to the resources and opportunities they need to succeed. Together, let us work toward building a brighter future for our children and our community. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move on to question one. Ms. Monahan, why are you running for the school board? And what qualifications and or experiences make you an ideal candidate for the Horseheads Board of Education? Thank you. Okay. Sorry. No worries. Having some technical difficulties on the timer. Okay, you are all good, Ms. Monahan. I'm running um, for school board because this is a $102 million business and it needs to be run like one. I have a business background, I have a marketing background, I have an MBA. I've spent the last 21 years in the business field. I want to be able to ask tough questions, hold leadership accountable when needed, and always advocate for what's best for the students, staff, and community. We have a fiduciary responsibility to act in the best interest of our district and the taxpayers at all times, and I want to be able to do that. This district belongs to everyone, not just the students, the teachers, or the community, and I want to collaborate with everyone to make it successful. Thank you. Thank you. I will repeat the question. Why are you running for the school board? And what qualifications and or experiences make you an ideal candidate for the Horseheads Board of Education? Ms. Clinton? I'm running for the school board for two primary reasons. One, budget gap options, and two, communication. I have a unique set of skills based upon my experience that I will bring to bear in a position on the school board to challenge the administration and my fellow school board members to bring back a budget that supports programs and also respects the tax burden that is being uh, moved to our taxpayers. The second thing is communication. As a constituent in the Horsehead School District, I find it frustrating that when I want basic information, I can't find it. Thank you. Ms. Ugenvarski? I care about our community and what's happening in the school district. I would like to be a voice, a person who will listen to the public. From being on the school board for 10 years, I know how a board should function. When I was on the board, intensive scheduling was implemented and our school buildings were changed to a K4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12 buildings. We had a line item budget and we worked closely with administration on the budget. No notices were given out that they may not be with us the following year until the board looked at these things and the board made the final decision. Thank you. Mr. Feinberg? Uh, this district and community have given me and my family so much. Um, I'm not from here, I'm from New Jersey. 
And when I grew up and I got married and decided to have children, and I have dogs as well, we looked for community uh, that would give as much as this school district gives to our children and our home. And I would like to give back to that community by offer offering a perspective that may not be offered by some other people. Things are changing. Graduation requirements are going to change. And the COVID money is running out. We have to decide what we're going to do. As a teacher, I'm the only active teacher running. I know what's going on because I'm in it every day, not just what the news and social media decide to post. My children may come home with stories, but I'm actively talking to teachers in the district about what they need to teach our children. Thank you. Mr. Jacobus? Yes. Uh, I think I'm qualified. I left teaching and immediately served for 12 years on the school board. 11 of those 12 years, I was on the finance committee, and for nine of those 12 years, I was chairman of the finance committee. I'm very much aware of the budget and the rules that we have to follow and, and so forth. The other thing is, I'm very concerned about what's happening in our elementary education especially, in the sense that we seem to have gone away from developmental education. And I'm pleased that the Board of Regents now is trying to bring back and make it very important as it concerns reading. Thank you. Ms. Dell? I'm a proud community member. I am so proud that my kids have gone through the Horseheads District with the excellent education and the excellent staff that are here in Horseheads. I chose to live here. I did not grow up here. I chose to come to Horseheads because of the education system and because of the district. I want to continue to see our district thrive. It helps all of our taxpayers to have a thriving school district. This is why people move to this area. And the more people we have moving to this area, the more our businesses can grow, the more our property values increase, and it benefits everybody. I bring board experience. I bring diversity of thought based on my work experiences and my work with nonprofits. And I, my focus as being a board member is to continue to make this district staff and program strong. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kane? Thank you. I'm running for school board because this has been a personal and professional aspiration of mine. My strength is in leading. My job every day is leading and cultivating more leaders. I have the integrity, vision, communication skills, and grit to take a seat at this esteemed table. I'm a results-driven individual who takes a multi-dimensional approach to decision-making that's driven by data. I can weigh all sides of an issue and possess strong skills in negotiating to bring out the best solutions. I have the dedication, the education, community knowledge to earn your trust and represent the best interests of the Horseheads community. Thank you. Ms. Forcier Rodaba. I am inspired to serve as a school board member by a deep-seated belief in the transformative power of education. Throughout my life, I've witnessed firsthand the profound impact that quality education can have on individuals, families, and communities. As a parent, I've experienced the joy of seeing my own children flourish in supportive learning environments, and as an educator, I've had the privilege of guiding and shaping the minds of future generations. As a Horseheads graduate, parent of two students, and member of this community, my inspiration for running for school board membership stems from a deeply held commitment to ensuring that every child receives the support resources and opportunities they need to succeed. As a former elementary teacher and current district leader as a director of technology with graduate degrees in curriculum and instruction, learning and technology, educational leadership, and childhood ed school building leader and school district leader certifications, I am well equipped to understand the complex issues facing our schools and to work collaboratively to address them. Thank you. We will now move on to question two. Where do you believe the district should head during the next five years? Are there activities, programs, educational strategies you would like, you would champion as a member of the board? Ms. Monahan? I'm sorry, did you say she was handing out water? You said, where will I see it going in five years? What would I champion? Is that correct? Yes, yes. Oh. All right, so can you repeat that question, please? Yes. Where do you believe the district should head during the next five years? 
Are there activities, programs, educational strategies you would champion for as a member of the board? Ms. Glanton? That's a really great question. I think that one of the places where I would like to see Horseheads is in a fiscally sound position in five years. I think that I'd like to see Horseheads in a position where they have a board that prioritizes any long-term commitments that they're making and in those contracts provide the latitude to exit those if we don't have the financial resources to back it up. We have to preserve education. The second thing I'd like to see is more of a focus on uh, mental health and self-regulation, being able to handle stress in a healthy way. I think that would be a great step toward managing potential addiction issues in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Uganvarsky? I would like to see more support in early education with proper support staff. The kids today have many struggles in many areas. Get more activities, programs, and educational strategies for our students. Since COVID, our students have fallen behind in reading, math, and other areas. They need support. Meet with staff and community to get their input on how we can do it to help our students be successful. Our students deserve the best, and our staff need support to help in these challenging times. Thank you. Mr. Feinberg? Well, the issue with that question is we have to evolve. State changes, the standards change, and we're changing as human beings. But we have to evolve without sacrificing the things that are already successful in this district, the special education program I'm particularly proud of uh, and should be regarded as a model in this state for the successes of the special ed program. But we have to be able to keep changing without sacrificing the kinds of programs that work. Uh, one idea that I have uh, is a work-based learning program. Uh, it's subsidized by New York State, so that would minimize the cost to the district. Um, but it is a program that promotes small business training for students. Those small, if those students happen to stay in the district and they're trained by small business owners, um, they stay, they open their businesses, and all of a sudden we might lower our tax base a little bit too. So we have to invest inside as well as out. Thank you. Mr. Jacobus? Yes. Uh, I'll go back to what I had previously stated, and that is a focus on elementary education, especially developmental education. One of the things that I learned in, at, very well in 32 years is that if our material and our instruction is not developmentally appropriate, then our children are going to be handicapped with their learning. And I'm also concerned, and I will get up, when I get on the board, I want to make sure that as a result of COVID, that we have, are working very hard and diligently to bring the students back up to the proper level. Thank you. Ms. Dale? So I want to see our district remain fiscally strong. As a current board member, that was one of the reasons why I was opposed to using all of our reserves to balance this year's budget. We need to continue to look towards the future, and we need to continue to build and save our reserves as we continue to hit difficult times. I also want us to continue to enhance our curriculum. Um, we have one of the best curriculums here in all of the schools in, in the southern tier, and that is just continuing to get stronger. I want to make sure that we, have that we have resources available to help all students, both academically as well as their social and emotional well-being. And then I also want to, be, to ensure that we're continuing with that capital improvement project that is right-sizing all of our classrooms, providing comfortable learning sp spaces for all of our staff and children, and the appropriate technology that our students need in this, in this environment um, in order for them to be successful in the workplace. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kane? Thank you. Um, in five years, I'd like to see the district continue to provide for the changing mental, social, and academic needs of our students and our school staff. I would like to see an increase in our general funds and reserves that used to be a significant amount to offset any fiscal distress. I'd also like to see the district provide more experiential learning opportunities for our students and really continue to build on those strong curriculum and instructional practices. I'd also like an emphasis placed on technology and AI and how to harness the benefits 
um, of this ever-changing world to prepare our students while safeguarding them from those potential issues and, and safety risks. That's something important that we really need to focus on. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Forz Forcier Rodaba. Sorry, it's a very long name, I know. <clears throat> Over the next five years, I would like to see the district prioritize teaching and learning while meeting students' academic, physical, and socio-emotional needs. I believe in implementing com comprehensive socio-emotional learning programs that equip students with the skills they need to navigate challenges and build resilience. This includes providing access to mental health services, promoting positive school climates, and fostering strong relationships between students and adults. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Monahan? Thank you. Over the next five years, I would like to see the district be in a fiscally strong, have a fiscally strong budget and look for revenue streams that support the budget and then support the budget, the district, and the taxpayers. For the students, I would like to see enhancements on hands-on learning to prepare them for real life, including financial skills, leadership, and ways to cope. Technology is certainly important. We need to continue to invest in it. And I agree with some of my uh, other candidates that we need to look for ways that AI can be utilized and we can prepare our students for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Now move on to question three, which will start with Ms. Ugenvarsky. Please identify and explain one issue or area in the recent past where you think the board has done well. Oh, okay, me. Um, Free lunch is now given to all students. Um, the board was able to use excess money in the food account for the high school, so they also re receive free lunch. Even though I know parents still have to put money on their accounts because the kids like to buy other things besides just the lunch. Thank you. Mr. Feinberg. I meant raise the tax base. I didn't mean lower from before. Okay, anyway. Um, the free lunch program, you stole my idea, but that was it. I, I do enjoy that program. I've seen that be unbelievably successful uh, when hungry mouths are fed uh, without any regard for anything. Come in, eat, go to school, study, do your thing. Full stomachs means full brains. Um, I also was very pleased with the capital projects. I know that uh, might be a contentious issue in this community. However, it's important to realize that by having these kinds of capital projects with the, um, for instance, the stadium, with the quality of that stadium, you're able to bring in more revenue by uh, hosting invitationals, by hosting state competitions that brings money in for the community. Uh, so that is something that I um, felt very positive about. Thank you. Mr. Jacobus. Yeah, I would say the one thing that I, that I observed is the allowing students from Horseheads to participate in the trades a program that was held at the Big Flats Community Center. I think it's important that we not just focus on college education, but expose our students to those other uh, opportunities to earn good employment and so forth in the community. Thank you. Ms. Dell. Okay, I have a few. Uh, first one on the capital projects, I think that um, the board has done a great job working with the administration, working with the community on the, our new learning spaces. Um, if you haven't been in the high school, our labs in the high school are phenomenal. And as an engineer by heart, uh, those chemistry labs are, are, are wonderful. So I think um, those spaces and the spaces that we're continuing to plan at the elementary level um, are great. All of our technology advancements, the fact that we are one-to-one -one computers for all of our students um, is very necessary and needed in this, in this environment. We handled the pandemic as best we could. Um, it was a global, global pandemic. It was new territory for all of us. And a recent thing that just recently happened is the fact that we are now having senior athletes recognize their favorite teacher at an athletic event. That shows that, that um, academics is at the base of everything that we do. Um, and I think that's amazing. And I hope we continue that um, tradition. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kane. Thank you. I also agree that the technology advancement and the one-to-one -one devices are critical. Um, the capital projects have provided rich and incredible learning environments and playing fields for our students. Um, and we are charged with having building assessments and ensuring that we are maintaining appropriate and safe standards within our buildings. And there were necessary updates 
um, and certainly some advancements as well. I think that the board has done an incredible job maintaining extracurricular clubs and activities, athletics, music programs at all levels, not just the 712, um, and an excellent job with the standard and, and quality of those prog pro or, sorry, uh, programs. They've historically placed a high value on their educators and continuing to seek ways to maintain Horsehead's status is a highly des desirable place to work and live as one of our bo other board candidates has, has so eloquently mentioned. Thank you. Ms. Forcier, Rodebaugh. As we all know, this has been a very difficult budget year. The board has worked tirelessly to meet the needs of all stakeholders and balance um, the various demands um, and, and listen to feedback. So I, I commend the, the current board's work for that. My priority is to ensure that funding is allocated in a way that meets the needs of all students and schools. This includes prioritizing resources for classrooms, supporting professional development for teachers, and investing in programs that address the needs of our student population. And I'll echo um, a couple of my other fellow candidates up here and say that the uh, free school lunch has been a, a great um, asset to the district to ensure that students are ready to learn each day. Thank you. Ms. Monahan? Thank you. I believe that the board has done a really great job with unified sports and making sure that everyone has a chance to participate. I also think that technology and the one-on-one -on -one devices has been great, along with the ability to live stream meetings like tonight, allowing all stakeholders to be able to view and hear what's happening. I agree that the safety of the building and the enhancements of those buildings has been crucial and it should continue. Finally, I do think that the capital projects provide a great opportunity for the district and generate a revenue stream for potential. Thank you. Ms. Glanton? I agree with my fellow candidates. I think all of the points they mentioned are definitely impressive. The school board's done a wonderful job on those specific tasks. I also think they've done a great job with respect to their dedication, and you can tell that just from the efforts. I'm critical of the budget. I'm critical of the commitments we made under the capital projects. I have no doubt that the school board members went into all of those dealings with the best interests of our students at heart. I think that as part of the school board, I can lend the fiscal perspective of what an overcommitment can do. Thank you. Now on to question four. Please identify and explain one issue or area in the recent past you think the board should have handled differently and explain what you would have done differently. Mr. Feinberg? We're in, I'm not going to say new territory, let's say existing territory. There's a lot of news out there that may not always be called news. There's a lot of misinformation, a lot of disinformation, a lot of uninformed people voicing opinions. Uh, where it may not be appropriate to come to decisions, but rather to ask questions. Uh, we've seen it on social media. Uh, we've seen op-ed pieces in the paper. And we only, mostly if you turn on the television, only are hearing the bad stuff from the news. Um, I think the Board of Ed needs to find a way um, with a PR committee, find ways to get out as often as we can. Um, not just going to events, um, going to community events as well as um, being as persistent as possible with getting out the facts. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jacobus? What I would like to bring up is the budget presentation that was made. I think that showed a lack of, of uh, transparency, I guess you could say, because not enough information was given to those in the audience who were being asked to, to consider and even make some suggestions. But without the proper amount of information, the, the public couldn't, couldn't do that. And I think that that's one thing that the district needs to do much better as far as the financial end of the district. Thank you, Mr. Jacobus. Ms. Dale. 
So one thing that the board has struggled with and the school has struggled with has been communication. And you know, it, it's already been stated about all the, all the misinformation that's out there. We have been trying for the past several years to really look for ways that we can improve communication. We developed a communication engagement committee in which we held uh, community engagement sessions for our community to talk about different topics, to present on different topics. Um, we do now staff chats when we do board tours, um, trying to find out as many ways as possible where we can get some, some, some streams of information so we can improve our communication. This is definitely an area in which we need to continue to improve. Um, and this focus that I would like to have as, as at, sorry, focus I would like to have in the board as we move forward into future years. Um, how can we improve that communication with all of our stakeholders? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dale. Ms. Kane? Thank you. Addressing the elephant that's kind of been acknowledged <laughs> multiple times is the budget. Um, while we cannot change inflation, nor lowered state aid awards, rising health care costs, and lowered enrollment numbers, what we could stand to improve is analyzing our spending patterns and trends, better forecasting on how these predicted variables will directly impact our programs and thus needing to put a heavier burden on increasing taxes. There needs to be clear foresight to anticipate and to provide for the proverbial rainy day. This also includes transparency and, and better communication between um, the administration and, and the Board of Education, I think could stand some, some improvement. I agree as well with Ms. Dale. Thank you. Ms. Forcier, Rodoba. Uh, similarly, I, I see a need to improve transparency and communication among the board. I'm committed to fostering a culture of collaboration and communication among all stakeholders in the community. This includes regular communication between the school board, administrators, teachers, parents, and community members, as well as opportunities for meaningful engagement and feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Monahan? Like many of the other candidates, my platform is 100% transparency and collaboration across all levels to build trust among all stakeholders. But unfortunately, we have not planned appropriately for the reduction of COVID funds and or attrition, and that has gotten to us to where we are today. We have to do better financially planning for the future. It's not gonna get any better in the years to come, and we have to be prepared for that. Communication can always improve, something that we all should work on, and we have to hear the voices of all stakeholders, potentially through roundtable meetings or, um, your hand coming up, threw me off, sorry, roundtable meetings so we can hear the voices of all stakeholders and actually be able to take that back to the board and plan appropriately for what they say. Thank you. Ms. Glanton? I think the way the school board meetings are conducted uh, inhibit communication from school board members themselves and from the community. So that's one thing I would change. I think the second thing that should be changed is the way in which the budget is presented right from when it starts uh, the planning process. My property taxes have nearly doubled. The student population has not doubled. The cost of living is up 22% since 2020. As I said, my property taxes have doubled since 2020. The last, last thing I want to uh, point out is this. I find it difficult to understand how an entity can present the fact that 49 people have to lose their jobs in June, and they mention this in April. I'd like to echo what one of my fellow candidates said. I think we could do better forecasting and prevent something like that from happening. That's shameful. Thank you. Ms. Ugenwarski? Thank you. A parent came to the board two different times. She was not allowed to finish her statement even though public comment is 30 minutes and she was only one there to speak. You are given three minutes to speak. The athletic placement process and how the district handled it with her children was very disturbing. The parent should have been allowed to finish what she wanted to say. She had one paragraph left to read. I never saw this issue come back to the board and I don't know how it was resolved, but it should have been done differently. My other issue is the budget process needs to be improved. 
A line item is a must. We need to work early, earlier and wiser with the budget. Thank you. Ms. Mia Sophia, we'll finish our questions. We're going to move on to question five. We're going to start with Mr. J Jacobus. <laughs> Describe review of the role of the school board mem as a, of a school board member as well as the relationship between the board and the superintendent. What is the ideal relationship between the two? The role of the school board is to uh, provide the appropriate guidance to the superintendent to provide oversight of the entire process within the district. The board is not supposed to uh, micromanage it. However, we need a board to monitor and oversee. We need to find out why all of a sudden, when I was on the board before, we had financial issues that were much greater than what we faced this past year. And we were able to solve, solve those and do it through a very transparent work within the community and so forth. And the board's responsibility is to make sure that happens and to make sure that the superintendent and his staff are uh, following our guidelines and so forth. We're supposed to give that person direction. Ms. Dale. So the board is responsible for three things, fiscal oversight, hiring a superintendent, and setting policy. Um, it's very important for the board and the superintendent to have an open and trusting lines of communication and relationship. And the board does provide guidance to the superintendent. Even more so, the officers of the board spend a lot of time with the superintendent, um, bouncing ideas back and forth with each other, providing feedback, providing guidance, and making sure that our superintendent and our board are both in alignment. Um, the superintendent and the administrative team are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. So the board is not involved with those day-to-day -day operations. It's just fiscal oversight, hiring the superintendent, and setting policy. Thank you. Ms. Kane. Thank you. Yeah, so the board's job is absolutely not to micromanage. It's to oversee the policies, procedures of the district, um, the board makes decisions on major and minor issues through public votes. A single board member is only as strong as the collaboration and the majority of any single vote on any single issue. The only employee who answers directly to the school board is the superintendent. The relationship between the superintendent and the school board is a system of checks and balances, effective communication systems with complete transparency, and at times, tough conversations. Productive deliberation leads to the best results for the district. This is what the system is intended to do and needs to do. Ms. forcier Rodabaugh. So the school board is tasked with um, um, ensuring fiscal accountability of the district, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, the, the school board is tasked with the fiscal accountability and setting policy to guide district operations. The school board is tasked with hiring the district superintendent and should work to provide support and guidance, um, but should not micromanage the day-to-day -day operations of the district. Ms. Monahan. I believe the school board should foster an environment where the board the superintendent and the district employees can work together to make informed decisions. This means actively seeking input from stakeholders, including teachers, parents, students, and community members on key issues affecting the district. The board must hold the superintendent accountable. It is our job. We must ask tough questions and push back for the responses that we may not always want to hear. By incorporating diverse perspectives, we can make decisions that truly reflect the needs and the values of our community. We are the stakeholders. Ms. Glanton. Thank you. That's a great question. I'm going to keep in mind when I'm 
if I'm elected, pardon me, <laughs> uh, that it was the constituents that elected me and I'm accountable to the constituents. And if the constituents have any issue with the operations of the school, I'd like to hear it. I think I should hear it. I think that's one of the problems, that the flow of communication doesn't mirror the lines of accountability. So while I appreciate the fact that we're supposed to, and we should collaborate with the superintendent, we should also be supervising, challenging, having the tough discussions, and letting him know when he needs to change course. Ms. Unvarsky. The board are the educational leaders of the district and determines the policies that govern the school district. The board should have goals and should measure the goals to see how they are being followed. The board is to make policy, make changes to the policies and procedures, manage the finances of the district, and present a budget to the community. The board needs a line item budget during the budget process. The board is in charge of the superintendent. We hire him and work with him to make sure the policies and procedures are followed. Mr. Feinberg. Everybody's right. Everybody. Financial oversight, checks and balances. We need to make sure we ask those hard questions when they need to be asked to the superintendent. We can't just be a rubber stamp and putting out fires left and right, front and back. We're all here, the eight of us are here because there is a fair amount of mistrust. We're not quite confident. Uh, but how, as a board member, do you allay that mistrust? You must be visible to the constituency, Ms. Glenn. You're absolutely right. You must be seen, which means you have to have ears all over your body to listen to the people that voted for you, even the people that didn't vote for you. You must be seen to hear the concerns of the community, which is why we're all here today. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to question six. How would you blend slash balance decision making on the Board of Education in relation to your own views, the needs of the community, and or the state and federal mandates and initiatives? We're going to start with Ms. Dale. It's a fine balancing act. Um, there are so many different stakeholder groups that we need to balance in every decision that the board and the district makes. We have, we have students at the foundation of all of it. We have parents, we have staff, we have taxpayers, we have residents of the district that don't have children in the district. Um, then we also have the state requirements. So it is a constant juggling act that we have and the decisions that are being made may not always be the popular decisions, but it's always looking forward to the future. It's always looking at that big picture and, and what is best for the majority of the district and what is best for our district to continue to move forward and to, and to um, continue to thrive. Um, and it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, there are many times where it's not the popular decision. There's a lot of negative feedback that we see on social media, um, but it's, it's always with the best interest of the students in mind. Thank you, Ms. Kane. Decisions, I have a strong ability to consider all sides of an issue and the skill to ask the right questions to deepen my understanding of the problem and potential solutions. It's important to also identify the relevant data that's needed and how it impacts our discussions as a board. As a school leader, every day, I have experience in ed law. I've had to take multiple courses on that and a strong, uh, str sorry, a strong knowledge of the legal obli obligations of a school district, considering the, the state ed and, and federal regulations and those pieces, which are really important as well, as well as all of the stakeholders and interests that you have to balance. Thank you. Ms. Forcier Rodebaugh. Could you repeat the question? Yes. How would you blend slash balance decision making on the Board of Education in relation to your own views, the needs of the community, and or state and federal mandates and initiatives? Thank you. Um, so uh, the school board is a collective body. I'm one of many, um, if I were to be elected, of course. Um, and, and that's part of leadership too. So um, I, my own view isn't necessarily what I would want to see happen um, as we make decisions as a school board. Um, those decisions need to reflect the needs of the community, 
Um, there's community members that have students in the district, there's community members that do not, there's business owners in the community, and we need to be sure that the decisions we're making are reflective of everybody's needs. Like Ms. Kane, I have substantial experience in school law and can bring that lens into my decision making as well. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Monahan. Thank you. I'm not running for this position for the benefit of my own students. I am running for this position to represent all parties and stakeholders. I am not an educator. I am a business owner and a businesswoman who every day has to blend decision making to benefit the greater good of the community or the organization I represent. This is no different. This will be the organization that I represent and the stakeholders will be the people I represent. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Glanton. In my career, I've been in many positions where there have been a variety of individuals with very different opinions and uh, very serious consequences depending upon the decisions. If I'm a school board member, I'm going to consider first the kids. Is this going to better their education, better prepare them for life? The second thing I'm going to consider is, is this what my constituents voted me in to do? And I'm hopeful that I'll be able to accomplish both of those things while collaborating with the board members and with the administration of the school district. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Unvarsky. When I'm elected to the board, if I'm elected, you need to do what is best for the community, staff, and students, students being number one. You might be able to adjust some of the state and federal mandates to meet the dis needs of the district. I am one of nine people on the board, and I'm a public servant to the people who elected me. Do what is best for the public, staff, and students, and get the public opinion. Thank you. Mr. Feinberg? You know, there's a time and a place, you know. Your issue may not be my issue as a father. Your issue may not be my issue as a high school band director. Your issue may not be my issue as a husband or consumer but your issue is my issue as a board member. And that's how I'll serve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobus. I think probably the most important thing is to, you have to, you have to sometimes set aside your own personal view. I've had to do that on numerous, numerous occasions and I've had to look at and not always agree with uh, board uh, education, the state uh, education law, and uh, and so forth. But the education laws and so forth provide us with some guidance. But we also have to be open to listen and try to understand differing point of points of view, and be able to set aside our sometimes our own strong view on certain issues. Thank you, we're going to move to question seven. How are you educating yourself on the issues that are most important to the district and school community? We're going to start with Ms. Kane. Thank you. I educate myself through regular interactions and connectedness to our schools and community members. I'm a person that reaches out to others Anyone that knows me knows that. I actively listen. I ask a lot of questions. Um, I care to learn. I seek to understand and get a pulse of the needs of others. I do that very well. I read our local newspaper and I tune into our nightly news as I'm sure all these candidates you know, beside me do as well. Um, as also, as a school leader, which I mentioned, just getting the updates on state ed and federal regulations and policies, I'm very up to date on um, those pieces and also um, future initiatives with education. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. forcier Rodebaugh. I stay up to date on the needs of the district um, through engagement with the school community. As I mentioned, I have two boys in the district, um, so engagement in school events, um, reading the newsletters that come home from the school in the district. I stay in contact with teachers. Um, and as a parent, I attend sporting events, things of that nature. It's a great opportunity to network and, and speak with other members of the community and see everybody's different perspectives. I tune into the, two, the school board meetings. 
Um, I can't always be here in person, um, but that'll change if I'm actually on the board and read the news. <laughs> um, and um, as a school leader, um, I'm obviously staying up to date. They're also attending conferences, um, engaging with publications, and I'm also continuing my education, um, pursuing my doctorate with the uh, University of Buffalo. So um, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Ms. Monahan. So I stay up to date through engagement, networking with my peers, listening, I think that's the biggest thing, and trying to be involved as much as I can within the district and with my, um, my kids and their friends and trying to hear what's the forefront. I think it's important to always seek information and not listen to what's on social media or what the rumors may say and do our own research and go to the sources to get that research or those true answers. I also think it's important to collaborate and looking for other collaboration from other districts on how they're handling solutions and problems that we may be faced with in the future. Thank you. Ms. Glanton? I echo those answers. I have nothing else to add. <laughs> I don't see any point in wasting time. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Invarsky? Um, I watch or attend school board meetings. I am the advisor for the um, Southern Tier Snowcats. I have a daycare. I go to various sporting events. I attend the plays. I attend the concerts. I've been very involved in this community for over 40 years, and people come and talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Feinberg? Of course, getting out listening to the students, the parents, the community members, the employees all of the employees. That's how I learn, by listening to what other people's perspectives have to offer. And as a teacher in a neighboring town out in Waverly, I'm always curious to see if there's an issue. Uh, sometimes the problem doesn't have to come from within. Sometimes there's a solution from outside. I like to see what the smaller school districts and the larger school districts are doing to attack the similar problems and similar issues that our school district is facing. Um, we have a budget shortfall. Everybody has a budget shortfall. What are they doing? Maybe we could get some ideas without having to try to start from nothing around here. Um, I'm always curious to know what other superintendents' ideas are, what other administrators are doing in other places, and not just with budget, but with other policies as well, to see what works for them. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work in horsets, but I'm always willing to find out. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jacobus? Yeah, I, I think it's... Um it comes down to really just listening to people out in the community and especially, at least for myself, is I like to listen to staff that are still teaching. Teachers and teacher aides, bus drivers, et cetera, that have known me for a long time and they have been able to give me uh, some insight into what is going on in the district and so forth. And I think that as a school board, we need to open up those communications to the people who are on the ground working in the district every single day. Thank you. Ms. Dale? So for those of you who know me, you, I'm very visible in the district. I'm at multiple school events, multiple athletic events. Um, I have many contacts with, with staff, with other parents. I have a student who's in the district who I hear a whole bunch of information from. Um, so I, I, keep, I keep abreast of information just with my contacts within the district. I'm 100% approachable. I will get people at the grocery store that will come up to me and ask me questions, people on the athletic field that will ask me questions, and I'm always willing to help and, and always willing to, to listen to their concerns. I stay up to date with the local news, um, national news. I'm very active with, um, with the New York State School Boards Association. I've been to multiple conferences. I, I, stay up, I stay up with all of their news releases that come out and their website. And then I also have multiple contacts at other districts in which I'm always benchmarking what are those districts doing. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to our final question. If elected during budget development, how would you balance educational needs with tax increases and the effect of, and the effect a potential increase in a homes assessment would have on a property owner's taxes? In addition, will you be supporting the budget on May 21st? We're going to start with Ms. Forcier-Rodeball. 
last but certainly not least, I had to wait this whole time to go first. <laughs> you got the one. Um, so, uh, it's been said already in some other questions, but kids really need to come first, right? Um, cutting positions, cutting frontline positions is not going to help t teachers teach and students learn. Um, we need to be prioritizing our people and not our stuff, right? So um, I, I know that the, the school, current school board and administration has worked really hard to get our budget to a place where we can save as many positions as possible, and that's really, really uh, highly appreciated. I will be voting in support of the school budget this year. Thank you. Ms. Monahan. Thank you. Um, students first, staff, and then community. But at the end of the day, it's a $102 million business and needs to be run as a business. We do need to look for ways that we can operate leaner in the future. I'm not one for staff cuts. Obviously, we can't do what we need to do for students if we don't have staff. However, if there are other areas that we can um, consolidate and look for reductions, I wouldn't be opposed to it. We are a business and we need to do what's best for the community and the stakeholders to keep our taxes low. Regarding this year's budget, I will support it. I know that the, um, it needs a super majority and I feel that it's not in the best interest at this time to have the reductions that it would be asking for if it didn't pass. However, I do feel that we did use way too much of the debt service money and I would not be in favor of that in the future. Thank you. Ms. Glenn. Would you repeat the question, please? Yes. If elected during budget development, how would you balance educational needs with tax increases and the effect a potential increase in a home's assessment would have on property owners' taxes? In addition, will you be supporting the budget on May 21st? That's a great question. Uh, I believe that programming comes first. I'd like to think that Horseheads is or can become a school district of choice and an employer of choice. I don't think that it is possible for any individual to teach confidently in an environment where they think they or their friends might be losing their jobs. I will be voting no on the budget. Thank you. Ms. Anvarsky. We need to think about the taxpayers as we look at the budget as a whole. Enrollment is down, yet the budget has increased close to $9 million a 9% increase this year. What is driving the big increase? Health insurance, capital projects, our debt? There are some areas that need to be looked in as soon as possible. We cannot wait until next year's budget season and still have the same issues. The state isn't good at getting their budgets done on time, but we still have to put a budget together. We should never take away from the needs of the students when doing the budget. And I will be supporting the budget this year because I do not want 49 positions taken away from our students. We need to support our staff, we need to support our students, we need to support their mental health, and um, voting down the budget would be devastating for, to the support staff that supports our students. Thank you, Mr. Feinberg. The $64,000 question, I think, yes, I'm gonna vote for the budget, that's without question, without question. Um, but how to balance? You know, it's, it's important that we realize where the funding came for those large projects. How aidable were they by the state? 97%. I see that number sometimes. So the minimal increase to our taxes is not because we paid every single penny for that stadium. I'm just giving that as an example. But how to balance the budget? There are more creative ways to, to, to balance budgets and to try to move things around. High dosage tutoring. That's always a, a, a huge idea uh, that I like. But we have to consider as a board of education, as a community too, and take that poll. Do we whittle away at everything just a little bit so it all suffers just a bit? Do we cut a few programs to keep the others strong? I don't know. But if elected, we're going to get together and we're going to figure it out. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jacobus? The number one priority I have in budget development are the students that we are asked to teach and make or develop into meaningful adults and good citizens. Sometimes you come down to a point where 
you have to make some of the tough decisions. But I think when we, when we cut classroom services, it doesn't matter what the level, when we cut classroom services, then we're doing students a disservice. We're required under the law to provide a good quality education. Thank you. Ms. Dale? The ultimate goal is to stay program and staff strong. Nobody on the board and the current board or I don't think on any future boards ever wants to be able to cut programs or cut staff. But we do need to balance. We need to balance with um, what the money that's coming in. We need to balance with the money that's going out. When you look at you know all of us, whether it's in the school district or in our communities, we've been negatively impacted by inflation, by rising health care costs. Um, our state aid has not kept up with the rise of inflation. That's why we're in the situation we are today. This situation was not a surprise. Our finance organization works on this year round. We look at financials every single month at board meetings. So this was not a surprise. This is thing, these are things that we've been working on. The reason why we're going out for a super majority is so we don't have to cut programs and cut staff. And so I will be voting yes for the budget, 100%. Thank you. Ms. Kane. At any given time, a school district is managing three budgets. There's closing out last year's budget. There's managing the current operating budget. And lastly, preparing for next year's school budget. When preparing a budget, there must be a common vision for school programming and overall priorities. And I think that's where there's some disconnect. That has to drive the, the appropriation of funds and not the other way around. We need to prioritize and plan, not react. Those three budgets at one time, it's important that we're doing it well and we're doing it right. The time to plan is before. I am voting yes because I don't want to punish those who are not at fault for the board and, and the administration's the, the budget. If you want to make a change, then think about what we're talking about today and vote for those people that are talking about um, really analyzing and looking at the budget for future. Because if we chop and, and, and crush our programs, we're going to weaken our district, we're going to weaken our um, community, and ultimately weaken um, so many other things. That's not the answer. The answer is to plan and to prioritize. Thank you. We are now going to move on to closing statements. You'll each have a minute to speak. Ms. Monahan. Thank you. We need transparency in our district. We need collaboration across all levels. And I want to take those two and build trust among all the stakeholders. I want to keep this district as one of the most prominent in the surrounding areas. The reason I moved back to this area. I'll admit I don't have all the answers nor do I know all the educational rules. However, as a proud community member, mother, and business owner, I am deeply invested in improving our district and our community. I have no alternative motives in running. I simply want to contribute to the positive change and be part of a solution. I will take a fiduciary responsibility to act in the best interest of the district and the taxpayers at all times. Thinking of our students first, staff, and community working to get our district back to where we all where everyone in the community can be proud to call it their home district I would appreciate your support next week thank you thank you Ms. Glanton <clears throat> we're in the position of having a discussion about this budget because of the planning that's already been done we're all afraid of a contingency budget and I understand that but that's part of our responsibility. That's part of the tough discussion. My understanding of a contingency budget is that teachers aren't losing their jobs. I'll be part of the board that will be operating under that contingency budget. And if we have to go through everything line by line to make sure that our students get what they need, I'm willing to do it. But I am not going to say yes again. The school district, the school board hears you twice. They hear you when you elect someone, and they hear you when you vote on the budget. That's it. This is your opportunity to say no. When else have you been given that opportunity? I hope I have your support. 
Thank you. Ms. Anvarsky? I would like to thank the students who organized this tonight. Thanks to the people who came out and those listening at home. I love this community and I want what's best for the students, staff, and taxpayers. Vote next Tuesday, May 21st. You can vote if you are 18 years or older. If you can't vote on May 21st, please get an absentee ballot at 143 Hibbard Road or call the office for more information. I hope to be elected to be a voice for the community. Please feel free to contact me with your concerns and questions. Horseheads is a great district and I want to keep it that way. Transparency, trust, and collaboration is what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feinberg. Thank you for hosting this. Um, this is very exciting. This is where, where every moment is a pivotal moment, but this is no different. Uh, being elected onto the school board is an awesome responsibility. Uh, and I feel I can offer a lot to that awesome and fulfill that awesome responsibility for all of us. Like I said in a previous, answering a previous question, um, I'm not just a father, a teacher, a husband, and a consumer, but I would represent as many as possible and listen as often as I can. We need a board to support answers, to get ideas, to hold people responsible. I think that's important as well, not to be just that rubber stamp. Um, I hope to earn your vote next Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobus. Yeah, I want to thank the students that have participated here tonight. I think that's an important part of your education. And I hope that your futures will be extremely bright and meaningful. As far as the, my closing comment is that I am still very disturbed over the budget process. Having worked for nine out of the 12 years that I was on the school board previously on finance, I just find it unbelievable that we found ourselves in this financial situation. I find it hard to understand why our reserves were not adequate enough to weather this so-called storm of uh, inflation, et cetera, that everyone brings up. And one of the go my goals is going to be to try to, to determine why we have ended up where we are at. And I would appreciate your support on May 21st. Thank you, Ms. Dale. So thank you to everybody who came today and everybody who's listening at home and to the students who are moderating tonight. Every person who works for the district is critical to the development of our children. And as a board member, what is needed for students is always in the forefront of my mind. As a community member, I want to see the district thrive. A successful district benefits the entire community. A district that invests in our students today to have a strong community in the future is my ultimate goal as a board member. Voting no will hurt our students, our staff, and our community. It's critical for us to vote yes on this budget. If elected, I will continue to listen to all stakeholders, ask questions for clarification, and work closely with the administration and my fellow board members to make sure Horseheads continues to stay the district of choice. Over the past couple of months, it has become clear that the community is looking for change. Change requires new thoughts and views, which we will get by adding two new board members with this election. Hard change, the type of change the community is asking for, also requires experience and leadership. And I am the only candidate who brings experience leading the board through complex changes. I have been committed to improving our district for the last nine years, and I'm asking for your vote to allow me to continue to drive future improvements for the students of Horseheads. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kane. Thank you, and thank you to everyone that came out tonight and our student moderators. I have the school leadership experience to lead our district through difficult times. I want our school district to remain a powerhouse of excellence, integrity, fiscal responsibility, a model for other districts, and we can be. My unparalleled work ethic, analytical mind, and empathetic nature is why you should elect me. My sense of humor is just a bonus. <laughs> Educating a child, including the cost, is different today, and I have what it takes 
to take our district into this new era. I care to listen, I care to understand, to think, to question, to support, to collaborate, and all of the above. It's time for change. I have a resolute presence, and I think you should elect me on May 21st. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, Ms. Forsey Rodebaugh. As we conclude tonight, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your time, your engagement, and your commitment to our community's educational future. It has been an honor to share my vision and passion for our schools with you this evening. I sit before you not as a mere candidate, but as a dedicated advocate for our children, our educators, and our community. If entrusted with this responsibility of serving on the school board, I pledge to uphold the values of integrity, transparency, and accountability in every decision I make. Together, we have the opportunity to shape the trajectory of our schools and, by extension, the lives of the students who walk their halls. Let us not underestimate the power of our collective voices and actions in creating positive change. As we move forward, let us remember that our greatest strength lies in our unity and our shared commitment to the well-being and success of every child. I humbly ask for your support and your vote so that together we can build a brighter future for generations to come. Thank you, and may we continue to work hand in hand toward a future where every child has the opportunity to thrive and succeed. Thank you. Now Dr. Douglas is going to give the closing statements. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a hand to our moderators, Ms. Anthony Miller and Ms. Mia Sophia. If you can also give a hand, it's not easy sitting up in the bright lights to each of our eight candidates. Thank you for your answers tonight. For the public, please remember, regardless of who you vote for, please vote and encourage others to come out and vote on Tuesday, May 21st from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the High School South Gym. Each household in the district should have received our budget newsletter, which is also available on our website. This is a great resource to explain what the community will be voting on as well as other district information. We want to thank you again, there are those that have come out. We want to thank those that are viewing at home. There was a little glitch at the beginning. They got it prepared, but the recording will also be posted up on the website. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see everyone at the polls on Tuesday, May 21st from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the high school South Gym. Thank you for participating in this year's Meet the Candidates Night.